Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now I've recently become obsessed with playing through my older games collection, but I can't help notice that most of them, well, haven't aged well. Now to me, graphics don't make the game and sometimes the way an older game looks adds to the nostalgic feeling of replaying something you may have first experienced in your childhood. Recently though, I came across a Budget Builds official video whereby he ran some old games in 4K. And well, I couldn't resist giving this a go for myself, only I may have overdone it a slight bit. There are a few ways to run games in 8K. One is by an 8K screen, which, yeah, that's more than my car cost me. Two is to buy a 4K monitor and enable DSL factors in the NVIDIA control panel, which will in turn produce an 8K image and scale it down. Or three, the way I've done it, which is mostly the same, though I'm using a 1080p monitor. What I've done here is enable DSL factors, which will allow me to display a 4K image on my monitor, then downloaded a little program called DSR Tool. This allows you to set custom DSL resolutions on top of that, in this case 7680 by 4320. While this won't be the same as viewing 8K natively, there is actually some sensible reasoning why you might want to do it. For example, not only will it make older games look sharper and more refined, but 8K on a 1080p monitor will pretty much eliminate all those jagged edges that are sometimes impossible to remove in games with more lacking graphical option menus. This video will be uploaded in 4K, hopefully, and thanks to YouTube's compression, the games probably won't look much different to the 1080p, so I'll be including a screenshot analysis here too, and I highly recommend giving this a go for yourself as really old games may even run fine on modern budget graphics cards, but let's get into it. First of all I started with 2004's Far Cry. As you can see I set 8K res here and enabled the very high preset, which shouldn't be a problem for the Ryzen 5 and GTX 1070 combo I'm using. I'll also be testing out the 1050 a little later on. Jumping into the game and immediately I was impressed by the differences I noticed at max settings 1080p. The weapon details really pop and despite being a 14 year old game, this 8K makeover really does do it some justice. And it's not hard to see why the graphics were such a big deal all those years ago. When not recording, the game runs at 80 frames per second, compared to around 300 at 1080p. And the 1070 is also maxed out usage wise, though the Ryzen 5 handles it like a champ. Looking at a screenshot comparison here, and as you can see at 1080p the game looks very nice, but it's not until we zoom in a little that you'll notice some key differences with both the jagged edges and the sharpness of environment textures. Look at the hut here first of all at 1080p, and then at 7680 by 4320 Running GTA 3 at DSR 8K actually fixed the transparent menu issue I was having, where I couldn't see any text on this screen. I've also set this 2001 masterpiece to max settings. With no AA options in the menu, the resolution boost here really helps to smooth out some of those jagged edges and gives this early rendition of Liberty City a nice little enhancement. Even so, the GPU runs the game at over 100 FPS most of the time. Again, the CPU is barely being utilised either, whereas the 1070 is running on average at 98% usage. Looking at this interior screenshot, and it's the distant objects that benefit the most here, like these planters in the background, that maintain a nice solid edge. I know what you're thinking, wow, anti-aliasing on plant pots? Well, melt my graphics card and sign me up. The newest title I tested was the original Skyrim which with its massive mod support would go great with a high res boost, especially combined with HD textures. To avoid a fire, in my computer case, I stuck with the vanilla game here, enabled high settings in the graphics menu, and jumped into the game outside one of my favourite regions, Solitude. It's the environment and building detail that benefit mostly from this res boost, whereas the weapons don't look too different. Anti-aliasing remained off throughout all games tested today, though I have to say turning it way up at 1080p would smooth out the edges and have them looking a lot better, though not as good in my opinion as DSR, which seems to benefit the whole image as opposed to just the edges of objects. That's why DSR really benefits older games without any or very limited AA options. And on a 1080p monitor, just turning things up to 4K would probably do the job just fine, but I just had to see how high I could push it. Finally, in Crisis, a game that's not really known for its fantastic performance, I turned things up to 8K but left the settings on medium in order to achieve a stable 30fps. 
High settings brought things to a crawl, but at medium, the game still looks pretty nice and doesn't stutter or hiccup too much. This game released about 10 or 11 years ago now, and it will still bring some systems to their knees, especially at higher settings. This is also the demo version of the game, which I've had on my hard drive for absolutely ages, and I don't think it runs quite as well as the final release. Looking at the detail comparison on the weapon here, like the screw for example, and you can see the sort of enhancements that DSR makes in this occasion. But what about with a more budget orientated card? Can that handle higher resolutions? Well, I swapped out the 1070 with the 1050 briefly, and while you won't be able to fire up the likes of Crisis, older games like GTA 3 and Far Cry should still run at reduced settings, though actually recording the games at the same time proved next to impossible. That being said, I think it's definitely worth a go, even for just a bit of fun. Um, I hope you guys don't take this video too seriously. I just wanted to see how high we could push the resolution of these older games and whether or not it would make a nice graphical difference to them. As it turns out, there is a nice little improvement over the game running at 1080p with the highest settings, even on a standard full HD monitor. So as I say, it's definitely worth downloading DSR Tool, giving it a go for yourself and seeing what sort of graphical improvements you experience and how well, of course, it runs on your hardware. But as always, thank you very much for watching this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, leave a like on it. If you didn't, leave a dislike on it. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. And hopefully I'll see you all in the next one.